Brando, I finna slam dunk. Get big on you fake pumps. That bump in the fake pump. Bitch, fell for the pump fake. Got him talking like first take. Get it right on the first take. Hit the hole in the first. Mic check, mic check. Another episode of Sit Down with Slim, man. We got Stone in the building. Our uh, Coach Stone. Why they call you Coach Stone? Oh, uh, well, you know, it came back from, you know, me having a lot to do with football in the community, coaching a lot of kids, and then it kind of carried over into the um, the entertainment, music aspect of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You played football too? Yeah, I did. I Where did. you played football at? I played at Josie. Then we had a um, arena team here in the city, and I played I played there for a couple of years. Arena, arena football. Arena that was football. uh, that was at um. Dang, I think I went to one of them games. It was at like the James Brown Arena yep, or something. True, true. Yeah, true. I went there before. They had some cool games though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you was coaching there? Or you actually? I was played playing there? there. I was playing. I um, we won a championship. I won a league MVP. Like, I had a real big year there, and um, coach just carried over from all that. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So, um, how'd you go from uh, playing sports to being a barber? Um, shout out to my partner, man, Andrew Walker, man, my partner Hollywood, Free Hollywood, man. He um, he owned a barber shop in um Southgate, and we used to hang up there, you know, kicking it, chilling, doing our thing. And mm-hmm. he just told me one day, him and my partner Slim from um Level One, they told me one day, like, man, you just you need to start cutting hair. And um, I was like, all right, cool. He was like, shit, I own the shop. Go ahead, pick your chair. And um, I had a lot of barbers work with me. Did my apprenticeship, you know, got got fell in love with the industry, fell in love with the business, and and we here now. What'd you like about it the most? Um, just creating, just creating, just taking like a a nappy canvas and turning it into artwork oh, with a haircut. Okay. So I kind of fell in love with the craft, not as not as much as the money, you know. As you grow in the business, the money gonna come. So I just locked in, learned how to cut and shit. I took off. How was your clientele when you first started out? Because everybody think once you become a barber, you just start making about five, six thousand a month. I mean, I was lucky, man. I was blessed. Like one of the reasons they told me to start cutting was shit. I know everybody. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, you know too many people. Like people that come get their hair cut from you just because you you and shit. I um. I took that and I ran with it. I had nephews, cousins. I just cut their hair for free, learning how to cut. Have barbers teach me stuff while I'm cutting. And then, um, yeah, man, a lot of people helped me get to where I'm at in the barber game today. Bro, I remember the day I met you. The day I met you, I was getting my hair cut by Spook. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you was across from him. Yeah. And I wasn't spying on you, but I was just looking like, like this brother professional as hell because I don't know if you know, Barber's not known for being professional. Yeah, but you professional, you quick, you have people in and out, you have clients all day. And my dog Spook was the opposite of that. <laughs> that's the day he left you in the chair, ain't it? Nah, that's that not. The nah, the day he left me in my, uh, excuse me, the day he left me in the chair. He rolled off on you. <laughs> yeah, he we was in Grove Town and he was cutting my hair. First, I came in and he was cutting some hair. And I was playing somebody in man. We gambling on man. Yeah. Then when I got in the chair, he started cutting my head. He lined up like the front of my head. And then he went to do a fade in the back. And he was like, hold on, let me hit this blunt real quick. He went outside, <laughs> tapped the blunt a couple times. He came back in. And I don't know what he did. Like he faded like one half of my head. And then he ain't say nothing. Next thing I know, the truck was driving off. Yeah, I remember that, man. Yeah. I, that. I was like, bro. He did crazier shit than that though. Like one time I was in Atlanta and he um what he did in Atlanta. Oh, I was supposed to come get a haircut. He had just moved up. He wanted to show me all the girls he had. He yeah. wanted to smoke some weed. <clears throat> Next thing I know, I'm like, bro, I got a flight at four. And he you was still like, ain't Yeah, he was like, Oh, I was gonna cut you at the shop, not at the house. I said, So what I came here for? He went out there to kick it with him. Yeah, that's what he thought, bro. I'm like, bro, I got a flight at four, bro. I feel you, I feel but yeah, um, I think I think barbers like that is why barbers get like you know they say being a barber is like an unprofessional professional business, but yeah. it's certain barbers that I know for sure that's professional. You actually one of them. I seen it. I experienced it. But uh, from being a barber, how'd you start promoting? Um, because I, I had no idea you was even in the nightlife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've been in the nightlife for a minute, man. I did my first birthday party probably. I can't remember what year it was, but it was with um, Calvin Walker down in Tropical Banner. 
So it was before you started cutting hair? Yep, before I even started cutting hair. Like, I just always carried myself as a brand. You mm-hmm. feel me? In my city, like, I felt like if I branded my name to whenever you hear Stone, it shit. It's a vibe. It's a sum. It's professional. It, mm-hmm. it, it's just what it is. And um, me and Cal Walker did my first party down there, and it was great success. And then we, um, me and Bird, shout out to Bird, man, free Bird, free tweet, free the biggest. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bird. We did one. Me, him, and Art did one with Radik at 3DL, mm-hmm. and it was just like, it was crazy. You know Rodrigo, I, mean? I think that's homie that was at the radio station when yep, I was up yep, there. Yep. Yeah, And it was on. Um, it was crazy. And then shit, we just made it an annual thing after that. Then I found ways to do events here, do events there, do parties here, do parties there. And shit, by a couple years into it, I'm like, shit, I'm a full blown promoter. You feel mm-hmm. me? So shit, is I've been rocking with that ever since. How does the um the promoter business work? Because I've been you about to now be the third person I asked this. The last person gave me a good answer, but uh, let's tie it all together. How does the promoter business work? How do you become a promoter? What makes you a promoter? Because somebody told me like 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 they be battling between the people that think just because they make a post they a promoter and what a real promoter is, and I still don't get the two. I mean, it's all with social media now, like. Shit. Anything you post is really promotion. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I guess if everybody promoting themselves, they're a promoter. But as far as the nightlife, man, it's just it's just a grind. It's just building the following, building the fan base, um, finding your lane, you know, and what works best for you and sticking with it. Like, you got to get out there and put the work in. Uh, before social media really was popping like that, like, you had to get out, tag the cars with flyers, like, pay for radio spots. You just had to do a, a lot of other things as far as social media posts to 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 accommodate that promoter aspect of your life. So it's just it's just everything a grind, man. What you put in it, what you put into it, that's what you get back out of it. Like I can sit behind a computer and promote on social media all day just on my page. But if, if I'm using the right necessary tools that's out there as far as social media promoting my business promoting my brand like shit that's that's a promoter like it, it, it's what you make it um how do you pick what people that 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 you bring out because uh i think a lot of people that's that's going to watch this know you for bringing out a little meech oh yeah for sure for sure i mean we kind of um we just look at who hot you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying we just look at who hot see who popping see who up and coming and then me, I like to study their social media, see how many people around here like their pics, follow them, or, you know, just interact with their content. And, and I kind of base it off of that. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about um, getting a big person at the right price, pretty much. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Like, <clears throat> how do you go about booking booking somebody like that? Like, like what's the process of it? I mean, <clears throat> I got a booking guy I go through. You know what I'm saying? I got a big homie who book all my artists for me, book all my hosts for me. So, you know, I just reach out to him and if I want to book him, he reach out to them and we work like that. Like it ain't, I got an inside contact to probably everybody out there just through my big homie, man. Shout out Boss ENT, man. See, I told you, I uh, I was working at 706, so I just got kind of tied into the uh, nightlife for a second and I was hearing everybody whispering. I actually came to that night y'all had a little meet though. But I was hearing everybody whispering like, "Yeah, man, they said they paid a hundred grand to bring him here. They said they they said they paid five grand. They said they paid twenty. I mean, <laughs> what we paid is what we paid. Yeah, you know what I mean, that's that's you know what I'm saying. Pretty much confidential between me and my people or me who I'm booking them with. Like it ain't mm-hmm. we really don't discuss numbers. You know what I'm saying? Because it. Like, so why you think everybody think they know then? It's it's just it's I know it's a hot party. When people talking about it, when it's the topic of discussion, whether it be negative, positive, what we paid, how we bought them, like, it's all good promo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so people just, I guess they like to feel part of something big. Yeah. So they feel like they know. I was hearing people say, yeah, man, they said they made like 74 grand at the dope, but everybody went home with like $300. No, nah, man. <laughs> they going to say that. You feel me? Yeah. They going to say that, but. You know, it was a good night, great night. Yeah, it was. Night. It was you fun too. Yeah, it was a real successful night. Yeah. And you know, 
you know, the stars aligned for us on that one. You know what I'm saying? Like, we went back and forth with their people. And then when we locked them in, it was a week after the season finale. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So he was still relevant. He was still hot. He was still popping. Like, he was the hottest young nigga in America at that point. You feel me? So we caught him at the right time. And, you know, BMF, they got ties in the city. Like, Atlanta, Augusta, like, I-20 is right there. So it's mm-hmm. a lot of people that I know that was, when I was coming up, that was affiliated with BMF. Like, we brought out some people that really don't even go out. You feel me? So it yeah. was just the right event at the right time. What do you have to accommodate people like that when you book them? Like, what's the the kind of things they ask for? Oh, you, uh, anytime you book somebody, a contract come with a rider. Mm-hmm. That's what everything that they need when they get here. And it, I mean, it pretty much don't be nothing but liquor and hope. Pretty much. <laughs> Chicken wings, shit like that. Like, yeah, I know yeah. you uh, You book a lot of female uh, personalities too. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah, Just yeah, some liquor, yeah. some hookah, a couple chicken wings. That's it. And that's all it is. That's it, man. It ain't nothing major. They come to pick up their back end, give us a good vibe, and on to the next city. Like, you ever took a loss booking somebody? Yeah, you're going to always take losses. Like, it's, 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 it's the business. You know what I'm saying? It's the grind. Like, that's the beauty in it, like the wins and losses. But to me, a loss, not a loss, if the vibe right. You feel me? Like, you got a horror story, though, because uh, – Kid Joe told me his horror story. He booked plies and lost like ten grand. And Art Dilla told me his his was recently with uh Pastor Troy at the last minute. Pastor Troy just decided he wasn't coming. Yeah, like shit. It's um. Let me see. We had little baby over in Aiken. Goddamn. Is this early, little back. baby? It was. It was. It was when everybody knew baby was about to be baby. Like right like, after my dog. Yeah, right after that album, right after that whole album. Damn, I can't remember the name of the motherfucker, but I know was, which area you're talking about though. Yeah, but it was um like we lost. He probably he was at a good number then, but we lost because we had to like change venues and shit like that. But Baby came out, rocked the show. Everybody there had a great time. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. that's that's what I mean by when every loss not a loss. You oh, okay. Me? So y'all just lost like there you on go. the back end, but it yeah. was still a successful party. Still a successful show. Like I'd rather lose a thousand dollars, everybody have a great time, than make a thousand dollars, everybody complain about my event. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like it's all about giving the people what they want. Like how'd you lose though? Just on um, ticket sales. Like it wasn't nothing major. It was like everything was promoted right, but it was like a lot of shit going on, and we had to change venues, and it was some other shit going on. So goddamn. The people didn't just turn out how we wanted them and expected them to. You um work with uh uh Tamin, right? Yeah, for sure. So um for sure. you was a part of that party with uh Pooh Shiesty? No, I wasn't a part of that oh, one. Oh, okay. I wasn't a part of that one. Yeah. I wasn't a part of that one. But shit, it was um I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I yeah, I know I know it, it was a situation there. I thought you was a part of it. But so uh Basically, with the little baby situation, all it was was uh, just you didn't have the outcome that you expected to have yeah, 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 versus yeah. the money that you had paid for yeah, it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily call, uh, count that as a loss then. Like, whenever Shit, I- you lost money. Every time you lose <laughs> money, it's a motherfucking loss. Yeah, like, but I feel, like, I feel like that's what come with the game, though. Like, yeah, I just been paying sure. attention to it a little bit. And, like, I got a homeboy who said he wanted to get into promoting. And I was telling him, like- he always tell me I'm a negative person, but I'm not being negative. I'm like explaining like whenever I see a promoter, it's a certain type of person. It's yeah. somebody who like most of the promoters I know is somebody who been in this city and lived in this city for a long time, know a lot of people, tapped in with a lot of owners, and then they're able to promote and move within that. And basically it's like a business where you're branding yourself. So it if you're not that type of person, I wouldn't recommend someone be a promoter. Like, if you just Joe Schmo from Macon, Georgia, now you live in Augusta, Georgia, and you decide that I'm going to be a promoter and I'm going to come with a whole bunch of flyers and just give them out, I don't see that being successful, especially how Augusta is. Like, I remember when True first started, I was talking to Charles, and I was like, man, I don't think I don't think an upscale spot will work in Augusta. And he was telling me, yeah, it will. And I think... I think they promoted it as an upscale spot for maybe two months and the pandemic happened. Yeah, pretty much. 
Um, Do you think an upscale spot will work in Augusta though? Yeah, for sure it's working, man. You got oh, you got truth, man. Those upscale spots, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Those um, nice decor, nice lighting, no smoking, dress code, like those upscale spots. Like those are the same. That's the same shit you're gonna get in Atlanta. That's the mm-hmm. same shit you're gonna get in Vegas. Like it's the same shit. Like those two of the dopest venues in the southeast to me. You know what I'm saying? Well, what I mean is like. In Augusta, they don't necessarily gravitate towards like a club that would be in Atlanta. Like they don't really view Oak and Truth like that. Like you remember when um when Truth posted the flyer for the drink menu, excuse me, the bottle menu. Yeah, Did you sure. see everybody sharing that shit going crazy? Like that was a lot of money. Yeah, they was, but it's just that social media for you. You know what I'm saying? It was <laughs> a whole bunch of people that's not a part yeah, of some the, shit the, commenting it, on it. They was the topic of discussion for that day. You know what I'm saying? It was relevant for that day, but shit, motherfuckers coming out every week and shh, buy bottles like crazy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it, it's just give the people something to talk about. Like I was telling you, man, when dealing with club business, all promo ain't bad promo. You know yeah. what I'm saying? All negative promo, not bad promo. Because that same saying? weekend probably that. <laughs> That probably bring out an extra 200 people. You feel me? Like, <laughs> shit, let's go see why the bottle price is so motherfucking high. Yeah. So you walk in that motherfucker and you feel like you in Atlanta, you in Vegas. Like, the dance floor light up, sex is all through the motherfuckers. Like, okay, where they, okay, that's what's up. We ain't in no bullshit. We ain't in nowhere where, where it got them the ceiling caving in. Yeah. Carpet ripped up, sex is got them ripped up, falling apart, like. I don't think people understand why bottles cost that much in the club, too, though. Shit. It's just... Shit, I don't know either. <laughs> shit. Nah. Uh, <clears throat> what I was told is uh, bottles cost that much in the club. First off, you paying for the service. And second off, because of the liquor license and the taxation on liquor. That's what I was always told. I mean, I don't know. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm a promoter. Oh, okay. See, I'm me? about to fill y'all in on what he's talking about right now. What he's saying is... This is how promoters work. Now, I'm, I'm going to let you explain how promoters work. But I hear promoters say all the time, like, they don't necessarily worry about the liquor and the bottles because they don't make money off that. Promoters make money off the door, correct? I mean, it depends on... I mean, it depends on the the, the, the situation you got worked out with the club. Now, promoters, mm-hmm. us as promoters, we'll come in and we get our own venue. We get our own bar. We get our own liquor license for a day. Then we run our own bar, like... It's the only bar we worried about, the ones we run. You feel mm-hmm. me? But shit, for if you come in as a promoter, you're just on the dough. Shit, you're just on the dough. That's all you worry about, the dough. You so how does a promoter make money, and like, what's the situation where he can make money in different ways, like off of drinks and off of bottles? Would, would he have to, uh, quote-unquote, lease the club owner's liquor license to make money off the uh, bar? I mean, it all depends on on the situation with with you and the nightclub you working at. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like that's just you know that's really like it's all about your own situation. You feel me? So typically, the promoter make money off the door and how much, much admission though, you right? Feel me? Yeah, like that's pretty much how it go. Okay. Yeah. So what's um what's some of the best parties you up uh, uh, you think you uh put on? Shit, my birthday was dope. My birthday this year was dope. Um, Lamiche was dope. Your birthday uh, was last weekend, right? Yeah, last week. Two weekends ago. Yeah, two fifth, weekends yeah, ago. Yeah, March 5th. It was a big turnout. Like, mm-hmm. And um, shit, we did Fujiano. We did Pooh Shiesty. Like, man, we done did some big shows. You know what I'm saying? Like... I had a lot of success, a lot of big shows over the years, like collaborating with different promoters, different owners, like shit been like, we've been bringing the city like real vibes, real artists for for a long time. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Not just myself, just all the other promoters that's that's promoting. Like we done had some um, successful nights, some big events, some some great artists. So we, we really bringing the city, man, like the real vibes, like the real legit. Vibes for real, like we ain't, we ain't putting out no bullshit. Like we ain't doing no bullshit parties, no bullshit shows. We ain't bringing no bullshit artists. Like we bringing everybody, motherfuckers want to see. You mm-hmm. feel me? So shit, that's that's what we gonna continue to do. You uh still managing artists also? Um no, not really. I kind of got down, fell back from that. Like 
once, you know, a couple of the artists I was helping got situations, like, got, got other situations, like, okay, bam. They straight. We got them where they need to be. So, shit, I could fall back and I could build my brand. You feel me? I could work on my brand. I can, I can, I could lock in at the shop. I could work on Stone Entertainment. And I just focus more on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going I'm to help the artists as far as I can help them. You know what I'm saying? And goddamn, get them where they need to be. Then shit, now it's all about me now. What um artists were you managing? Um, me and True Cash had a situation. Um, me and Yayo before he fell, he had a, we had a situation, and um, you know I just help all the artists, man. I help any artist, like any artist ever reached out to me for anything, like I help them. I don't mind helping them, like I'm put artists on shows, like I'm pay every artist I put on the show, like that's 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 what we gotta do as a city. We gotta push our artists, and I don't mind helping nobody. What kind of situation did True Cash get? He got a situation with um paper trail five fifty like he um he got a, he got a, he got he got what he needed you feel me so shit the rest history he'll be out of here real soon yeah yeah for sure I don't, I don't like <clears throat> to speak about rumors and stuff but uh uh I heard somebody having a conversation about about True Cash saying that him and a couple more artists in the city was signing like ten thousand dollar entertainment deals and getting shelved or something but. I didn't understand if it's an entertainment deal, how can somebody get shelf? Oh shit, I don't know. You feel me? I ain't, <laughs> yeah. gonna, I ain't gonna speak on nobody's situation. You feel yeah. me? But the boys in a great position, man. Like real great position. So shit, you'll be hearing from everybody. Everybody who got a situation, you'll be hearing from mm -hmm. like soon. Like real soon, for real. I probably need to get true cash on here. Yeah, you need to. He'll do it. Yeah. For sure. For and, sure. For uh, sure. Yeah, yo, I actually spoke to Yeah, yo, on Instagram though. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but um, what else you got going on with the uh, promotion and who else you bring to the city? I don't know, man. That's what we we in the middle of that right now. Like we just brainstorming, brainstorming, reaching out and getting numbers, and you know we had Truth every Saturday, Saturday mm -hmm. night banger, Stokes on um, Tommy, Jeremiah, myself. Like we just constantly working, man. It's yeah, y'all definitely doing what y'all supposed to do because whenever you start hearing some people uh, hating on how much money y'all getting, that means you're doing something right. <laughs> hey, man, that, 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 that shit come with it, man. That, that, yeah. You feel me? Like, that shit come with it. And people just speak on shit that they don't even know nothing about. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it is what it is. I know exactly. But, but anything else you got to say before we get off of it? Nah, man. Everything cool on my end, man. Appreciate you for having me. We finally <laughs> nah. made it happen, guys. Yeah, man. I know, man. I've been I've been telling you to come on with it every time I see you in the club. For sure, for sure, for sure. For <laughs> but sure. that's all we got, man. Appreciate y'all for listening. We out. That was up.